Greetings and welcome. You're tuned into TMH Daily English News. Our updates for today include the government of Tigray congratulates Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus on his re-election as the Director General of the World Health Organization. In a statement it released through its external affairs office, the government of Tigray said Tedros's lone candidacy for the world's top health position and the nearly daily support he garnered demonstrate the global respect and the admiration he has earned due to his excellent leadership. The statement added that his re-election reflects the confidence member states have in his ability to continue to provide first-rate leadership in his second term. The statement also noted while Dr. Tedros has justifiably garnered global admiration and acclaim for his leadership over the past five years, he's also been the largest target of the vicious smear campaign spearheaded by the Ethiopian regime and its supporters solely on his account of his Tigrayan identity. The government of Tigray dubbed this campaign an extraordinary display of pettiness and a historical first. It stated that the smear campaign against Dr. Tedros has been designed to intimidate him into silence in the face of catastrophic humanitarian and medical emergency, as though his ethnicity should prevent him from fighting injustice and advocating for the equality and the rights of Tigrayans as human beings. Although these personal and unhinged attacks on Dr. Tedros are not shocking, they're not surprising either. After all, the regimes spearheading this calumny and defamatory attacks against him are also the principal architects of genocidal war on Tigray that has made Tigray, in the words of Dr. Tedros, hell on earth, as the statement said. The government of Tigray said Dr. Tedros has, through his actions, proved that he's a world citizen, pan-Africanist, a bone-dry Ethiopian patriot, and a proud Tigrawai who sees no contradiction in holding these identities. It's also stated that Dr. Tedros is championing for the cause of justice for all human beings, including Ethiopians and Eritreans, stands in direct contrast to the performative, flag-waving patriotism of two regimes and their foot soldiers in the diaspora. Ethiopia says it's unhappy over Abiy Ahmed's portrayal in Time 100 list. In a letter to Time, Abiy's office said it is outraged with the way the U.S. magazine depicted the country's leader when it announced the list of influential people of the year. Time magazine has included Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed and Ethiopian-born U.S. citizen, computer scientist Timnit Gabru in the latest 100 list influential of people of 2022. Time said Mr. Abiy's peace treaty with Eritrea quote-unquote, planted the seeds for an Ethiopian civil war. It also stated that Mr. Abiy, together with Eritrea's leader, launched a military campaign against Tigray's People's Liberation Front and their leaders. The office said it is dismayed with the way Abiy Ahmed has been represented, as well as the portrayal of who started the country's civil war. The office said it is dismayed with the way Abiy Ahmed has been represented, as well as the portrayal of who started the country's civil war. It describes his depiction as a character assassination, and it has requested the magazine to give an explanation. There has been no immediate comment from the publication. Human rights concern Eritrea says the date of Eritrea's independence merely reminds Eritreans of the betrayal by Isaiah Safwarki's regime. Human rights concern Eritrea issued a statement on the eve of Eritrea's independence under the title Eritrea Independent But Not Yet Free. The statement noted that the day represents the loss of personal and democratic freedoms of Eritreans and the even more dangerous loss of respect for the truth. Sadly, it remains at a present a grim anniversary with nothing much to be celebrated. HRCE underlined, adding that the promise of this date has not yet been fulfilled. The statement also alludes to today's Eritrea, truth and justice, freedom of movement and religious freedom, as well as human rights. What we can celebrate is not visible on these streets of Asmara or anywhere else in the country. HRCE, despite all of their suffering, the Eritrean people have not yet given up and said that their ongoing spirit of struggle for is yet to still be celebrated. An Eritrean prisoner of war in Tigray said he and a few of his friends massacred 15 to 20 innocent Tigrayans. The Eritrean soldier, now prisoner of war in the hands of Tigrayan forces, told the media that other Eritrean soldiers also massacred many more civilians. Another Eritrean is also heard saying all Tigrayans, including those in the womb of Tigrayan mothers, should be exterminated from this earth. 
outgoing Somali president admits sending 5,000 troops to fight with Eritrea in the Tigray conflict. Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, Somali's outgoing president, acknowledged for the first time that 5,000 of the nation's soldiers were sent to Eritrea last year to undergo training and said their return was delayed to prevent any political upheaval. The secret recruitment and dispatchment of the troops sparked protests in Somali last year, with their family members complaining that they weren't notified of their whereabouts. Mohamed, who's widely known as Fermajo and lost his bid for re-election this month, said the soldiers can now return home, integrate into the Somali army, and help fight the insurgency being waged by Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab. We sent the largest contingent of our army to Eritrea for training, he said at a ceremony that marked the handover of power to his successor, Hassan Sheikh Mohammed, in the capital of Mogadishu on Monday. Formaggio added the forces, which number 5,000, were trained a year ago, but their return was postponed due to political unrest and elections. Eritrea backed the Ethiopian government in its fight against Tigray forces in the ongoing conflict that erupted in the late 2020. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's administration has denied that Somali soldiers fought alongside federal troops in Tigray. The head of Somali's Parliamentary Committee on Foreign Affairs last year asked Mohammed to investigate the complaints that some of the nation's troops went missing while fighting in Ethiopia and Somali's former deputy spy chief subsequently told local broadcaster Gubjug TV that hundreds of them may in fact have died in clashes there. The U.S., CBJ, join in growing concerns over Ethiopia's latest crackdown against journalists, community, and activism. Timni Tabayru presents this report compiled from Adi Standard and AFP. The U.S. government and Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, yesterday joined growing concerns over the latest security crackdown against journalists, commentators, and activists critical of the Ethiopian government, which saw at least a dozen of them placed under police custody in a span of three days. State Department spokesman, Ned Price said his country is deeply concerned about the narrowing space for freedom of expression and independent media in Ethiopia, including a troubling increase in reports of harassment, detention, arrests of journalists, media professionals, and activists. The State Department strongly urged the Ethiopian government and regional authorities to uphold the rule of law and provide all applicable procedural safeguards for any individual arrested. Similarly, the global media watchdog, CPJ, detailed the arrests and called on the Ethiopian authorities to immediately release all recently arrested journalists and media workers and ensure that the authorities cease harassing members of the press. On Monday, the 23rd of May, Amhara Regional State Police and Security Bureau Chief Dasaling Tasso said some 4,552 suspects have been arrested in connection with the ongoing rule of law operation in the region since a week ago. The news has raised alarm among rights groups, including EHRC. Daniel Bakale, Chief Commissioner of the Ethiopian Human Rights Commission, said such arrests are not appropriate as they are not in line with the principles of human rights. Media companies said at least nine of their workers were arrested, with two outlets covering Ethiopian affairs on YouTube. YouTube channels reporting that their studios were raided in recent days. President Joe Biden has increasingly applied pressure on Ethiopia, including suspended valuable trading privileges in outrage over the government's rights record in the war that broke out in late 2020 with Tigrayan forces. Biden's tough approach has angered some Ethiopian American groups, which accuse him of bias. But one group, the American Ethiopian Public Affairs Committee on Tuesday, also commended the arrests of Amhara as not consistent with democratic values. Thank you.